Well, it's day 12 of our journey to Easter, and it's Good Friday. We're on top of the hill here. We have been ascending the hill for the last 12 days as we've walked through the Passion story in the Gospel of John, and this week through Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Our reading today is Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 through 66. And it talks about what happened on a cross. The soldiers of Pilate, the Roman soldiers, took Jesus and they mock him and they spit on him. And on this Friday morning, they took a crown of thorns and wove it together and shoved it on his head. They mocked Jesus and bowed down before him in mockery and said, Hail, King of the Jews. Then they lead him out and they crucify him, where having placed his cross on a man of Cyrene called Simon, and they come to a place called Golgotha, or the place of the skull, and they stretch Jesus out. And they take spikes and they nail him in the wrist, each wrist, and they cross the feet and nail him probably through uh, the ankle bone. And they lift him up suspended uh, between heaven and earth in a slightly lowered position so that he would have to push up to get air. What struck me through reading the crucifixion story is that they take Jesus and they lead Jesus away and then they crucify Jesus and they do all these things. And I'm reminded of what we read last week in the Gospel of John where Jesus told Pilate, you would not be able to do these things unless it had been given to you from above. Christ, as one man had said, was not a victim. Christ was a volunteer. He allowed himself to be struck. He allowed himself to be mocked and he allowed himself to be crucified. When he was on the cross, it says that when he came to the cross, that they offered him, in verse 34, wine mixed with gall. Mark's gospel says that it actually had myrrh, which would be like a narcotic. It would allow a victim to not feel the full pain. It was, it was sometimes an act of slightly mercy that people from the crowd might offer the crucified victim. But the Bible says here that Jesus would not drink it. Christ would not die for our sins halfway numb. He had to take the full punishment for our sins. While he's on the cross, the chief priests mock him. The, the thieves on either side, it says in verse 44, reviled him. Of course, one we find in the Gospel of Luke was brought to repentance and was saved. But Jesus is mocked. If you're the Son of God, come down and from the cross and save yourself. And the fact of the matter was, Jesus could find no mercy on that tree so that we could find mercy. It says in verse 45 that from the sixth hour, the Jewish sixth hour would be high noon until the ninth hour, which is three in the afternoon, which was the same time that the Passover lambs were being slain in the temple. It says that a darkness came across the land. And I would encourage you to think of this darkness not as God turning his face away from Christ, but the Father turning his face upon Christ as Christ was judged with the wrath and anger and fury of God. And Jesus says, quoting from Psalm 22, 1, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Christ fully taking on the punishment for our sin. And then when everything's done, he yields up his spirit. And some crazy stuff happened after Jesus gave his life and yielded up his spirit. The temple, the, the veil in the temple was torn, not bottom to top, which would be an act of man, but top from bottom, which is an act of God. And it wasn't just that God was showing something, but God was inviting us in now that Christ, his body, the veil of his body had been torn. All of us are invited into God's holy presence now. And there was actual resurrection. There was an earthquake and tombs were opened up. And as we'll, as you keep reading, you'll see that later on after the resurrection of Jesus, these people came into the city, these raised bodies and began to testify of Christ. But here it's just death and it's pain and it's suffering. But it says that even the, the men that executed Jesus were filled with awe and they said, this is the son of God. Joseph of Arimathea who had previously not come out publicly as a disciple of Jesus, goes and asks for the body. Pilate gives it to him and Joseph lays it in a nearby tomb. And then down in verse 62, the chief priests and the scribes come and they want the tomb of Jesus guarded because they call Christ an imposter. And they say, if something happens to the body, this fraud will be worse than who Jesus was. So Pilate says something that I find quite ironic on this Good Friday. Go make it as secure as you can. So what we have on this Good Friday the irony is that while it may be good for us, it was not good for our Christ. But the good news of the gospel, let me read from you 
a hymn by Isaac Watts. The first verse says, not all the blood of beast on Jewish altar slain could give the guilty conscience peace or wash away its stain. But Christ, the heavenly lamb, takes all our sins away, a sacrifice of nobler name and richer blood than they. On this Good Friday, Jesus suffered not just in our place. He died for us, but he died instead of us. I want to encourage you to come to, I hope to see you at Ascend the Hill tonight. One presentation at six, one at seven. You'll ascend this very hill as we remember Jesus the crucified. Have a great day.